Welcome back to FPV Reviews. For today's flight, we're using our Tesla style battery and experimenting with a combined endurance and high altitude flight. This will give us some data on altitude potential and a relatively low amp draw. We already performed a torture test of the battery at a high amp draw and found very good performance. So we know that it can put out a lot more current than we will be asking from it today. More than anything, we're curious as to what kind of altitude we can achieve without really even trying. So, after takeoff, we climbed at roughly 30 amps, just to see what would happen. During the climb, we encountered a cloud layer. We could have diverted to avoid it, but as we wanted to climb, we decided to rely on the Gemini version 2's stable flight characteristics and our telemetry to help us during this phase of flight. Once we got past about 1,000 feet altitude or so, the air got very smooth, although we did hit a mild pocket of turbulence at about 3,000 feet. We noticed that several times during the climb, we had to make slight changes to the throttle and RPM settings of the motors to adjust for the decrease in air density at the ever-increasing altitudes. However, the aircraft continued to climb without any trouble. We should also mention that for this flight we were carrying two full HD mapping cameras in the large rear payload bay, one redundant video system just in case of failure of the primary system, the 360 degree pan 90 degree tilt observer camera, and two other full HD video cameras in addition to the pilot's FPV system. Four of the cameras were placed outside of the airplane, and I'm sure they caused some extra drag, but it was not noticeable. The aircraft also carries two long-range control systems, allowing for two operators. We finally reached a maximum altitude of 4,008 meters, at which point we decided to cut power to the motors and glide back. Handling of the aircraft was extraordinarily stable and easy. As soon as we cut power and entered glide mode, the aircraft naturally assumed a glide angle on its own. Because of the overall layout and design of the aircraft, the handling is exactly the same with power on and power off, and no trim is required. It would take a really long time to get back down. So I held the elevator down slightly in a fixed position to put the plane in a slight dive. Increasing the airspeed creates a bit of extra drag and the altitude bleeds off a little faster. As we descended, we noticed that the cloud conditions had improved. There were still some light fluffy clouds near our flight path and we couldn't resist diverting our glide path slightly to go play around in one of them. After that, we continued our descent, encountering the familiar turbulence at lower altitudes. Our descent had taken over 40 minutes, and the battery had recovered to nearly 11 volts. After that, we made another uneventful landing. We're really happy you could join us for this epic flight 
and pleased that we could record the beauty of the earth from these altitudes for all of us to enjoy. To find out more about the Gemini version 2 aircraft, please visit our website, barrowspaceindustries.com. The Gemini version 2 is designed to be built from standard hobby grade materials and just a few bits and pieces from eBay. To speed things up in the build process, a laser cut kit is now available for purchase from Flying Squirrel Models. It's never been easier for you to have the next level of performance in airframe design. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more videos like this. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one.